Shaving. Almost everyone does it at some point, but not everyone is content with the canned foam and cartridge razors that you just throw away. No, some like a little bit more luxury. Like me, I like to use a safety razor, but also I need a good shaving brush to whip up the perfect lather. I'm Mike Price, and this is Mike's Makers. My name is Matt Darrington. I live in Idaho Falls, Idaho, and I make shaving brushes. It all started, um, I attended a university that required that you be clean shaven. So I had to shave every single day, and I was just having all sorts of problems. My skin was drying out, I was getting razor burn, and, and just, it wasn't a pleasant experience. My dad said, well, there's other ways to shave. Let's look into those, let's see if that if that helps you. And uh, he gave me a safety razor and a blade and we tried a soap and uh, it, it was significantly better. And I thought, oh, this is kind of cool. I wonder, wonder what this next soap is like. So I tried another soap and then, oh, maybe I like this brush better or let's try another blade. And so what, what, happened, what happened was kind of a transformation from something that was a chore that I, I kind of dreaded every morning into kind of a study or an experiment, something that was fun and uh, uh, really kind of developed into a hobby. That's how I got into to wet shaving. So what we, as a wet shaver, um, what we like to do is take a shaving brush, apply a soap or a cream, whip that into a lather, and then apply that to your face and then shave with a blade. Just as essential as the brush is to shaving, so is soap. Okay. So today we'll use, we'll use this one. Uh, this is a hard soap. So it just uh, looks like a tub of soap. It's uh, okay. about like a, a bar of, uh, oh, yeah. just maybe a little bit softer than like a bar of soap like uh -huh. in the shower. But uh, essentially what you do is you'll wet your brush. This is a synthetic knot that okay. I've got wet here. Um, and then you'll just take that to the puck. And you're just gonna do this. We'll make a little mess. This is usually over the sink, but right. we're in the shop today, so <laughs> we'll uh, make a little bit of a mess, but that's all right. So this is called loading the brush. And yeah, you can see we're making a little bit of a mess today, but- uh, That's all right. There, that's about enough. Okay, so now we've, we've made our mess. So I'll go ahead and set that down. And then I'm just gonna do a palm lather. This is kind of where the magic happens. You can see oh, yeah. it starts to whip up into a shaving cream. Yeah. And it sure smells nice, too. It does, doesn't it? Brushes are a critical part of this shave. Um, you need some way to make a lather. So you'll, you'll use those brushes to create a lather, whether it's with a hard soap or a soft cream. You need a soap to match or, or a, a brush, rather, to match the soap. And that's what I do. This is what we're gonna turn today. This is one of the blanks that I made. Okay. Um, You've got some rocks, rocks in yeah, there. Yeah, this is, they're stacked rocks. I call them my Zen series. Those are oh, very nice. the most uh, popular ones that I sell. Um, but we need to find the center, because if I'm gonna put this on there and it's not centered, right. yeah, it, it, it could, could actually be dangerous. Uh -huh. So I use this simple tool here, and then I just kind of scratch on the top of it essentially find center, okay? So I kind of make a pizza, right? And there's center. So now what oh, I'm gonna okay. do, I'm gonna drill this out. I have to know what size of knot I'm gonna use. I happen to know I'm gonna use a 24 millimeter knot, which requires a one inch drill bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start it here. About like that. Okay. You'll see these cool noodles that happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna go right over to the lathe. So I've got that front part, we know that's centered. <clears throat> I've made a center mark on my mold, so I know that the bottom is centered as well. Okay. Lock everything in place. And so what kind of tools do you use to shape it? Uh, High-speed steel is what I prefer. There's a lot of guys that use carbide tools. Um, this is this is called a skew. This is what most of my work is going to be done with. Um, the skew is uh, a challenging tool because it can catch. 
uh, but it also gives you a lot of freedom on how to shape it. Okay. I like steel because I can sharpen it. Ah. I don't. You can't sharpen carbide tools. You just replace them. So I'd rather just use steel because I'm. I happen to be handy with a grinder. So. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we'll go ahead and we'll start a test spin. Looks like it's spinning true. And then now gets the noisy part. So okay. here we go. I'm just taking out some of the irregularities in the top. So you're just basically smoothing it out? Yep. And you can tell it's smooth when you can rest your tool and it doesn't chatter. Oh. It chatters a little bit now, so I still got a little ways to go. My favorite thing is taking raw materials, things that uh, would just look like junk to other people. You know, it's, it's a, a jug of uh, one chemical and some rocks, maybe some sticks and uh, combining them and making something that uh, people really enjoy. Something that in the morning you look forward to using or, or you look forward to having uh, maybe even on display in your bathroom. Maybe it's on you know, uh, the back of the, the counter. It's something to look at every day. It's kind of functional art and that's, that's the way I view it. This one's called a gouge. This is what I use to make curved cuts. There, there's something extremely gratifying about, and I think most craftsmen would, would tell you this, um, finding something and saying, I bet I can do that better, and then actually going out and doing it. And uh, bef you learn a new skill, you hone the skill, you're always learning. It's constantly learning. You're never done um, learning the skill. So it, it's always, it's, it's about the chase. You're always looking for something more and you're never gonna quite get there. And it's, uh, uh, that to me is, is the most appealing part uh, of being a craftsman. Okay, there we have it. So we have the rough cut. Now we're gonna get to sanding. <clears throat> and we're gonna start with what I call the uh, the sanding, pa sanding paper ladder. So you start at 80 grit, or at least I do. Um, I'm gonna work my way all the way to 12,000 grit. So really, I want this thing to be polished like glass by the time we're done here. All right, we are almost done. Last thing we need to do is a quick polish, and then we'll simply cut that off. Cut that okay. off the end. And are you using uh, a specific kind of polish, or are you still just just uh, just a plastic polish? You'd see it in the automotive industry. Okay. Something that maybe you would um, polish your uh, headlights with. Uh huh. And then I use these just a shop rag to apply it. Shop in this rag case, or slash or an old sock. An old sock, yep. <laughs> I actually like to use cotton because it rips. So if it does get caught in here, oh, okay. it, it doesn't take me into the lay that just tears apart. Oh, well, so that's that's good. A little bit of a strategy behind it. So let's finish this one up. And there you have it. Oh wow! And look at that. And this is where you, you'll stick the Yeah, let's the grab knot. a knot. I'll show okay. you what that would look like. So this would be, here, we'll grab, uh, we'll grab this one. So then we would just simply, two things to finish it up. I'd sand the bottom down to get that all glassy as well. Mm -hmm. And then just to simply just epoxy cool. the knot in. Oh, wow. And then it's done. And then it's done. Well, Matt, thank you very much. Absolutely. I appreciate you letting me come and see what you do. Sure. And how can people get a hold of you? Uh, the best way to get a hold of me right now is uh, on social media, Teton Shaves. Um, Facebook, Instagram. Also, I have partnered up with a soap maker, uh, Murphy and McNeil. Um, if you go to their website, that's where most of my brushes are sold. Okay. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thanks, man.